Now, the subject that I'm going to go into is called violence in America. Now, I chose this very important subject, violence in America, to go into because every time you turn on your television and you watch the news, you see increasing violence all over the, the earth every time you watch the news. Not just domestically here in America, but you see violence spreading throughout the four corners of the earth. Every time you turn on your radio, as I said, you watch the news or read a magazine, you see violence every single day. You read the newspapers, okay? Violence is escalating throughout this world at a phenomenal rate. So this is a subject that I want to go into tonight. And I want to show you, according to the words of the Most High, that all these things were prophesied in the scriptures. And this is to let us know that we are heading closer and closer to the second coming of Jesus Christ and the end of this evil and wicked world. Now, if you have your scriptures, I want you to follow along with me as we go along in this in this subject. Here's the book of Genesis, the sixth chapter, verse five. And I'm going to show you the judgment and the punishment of what happened in the days of old for the, this very act of violence. What happened and what was the punishment to happen on the earth to those that lived this rebellious and unruly life? Which you see here going on, not just in America, as I said, but throughout the four corners of the earth. I'm going to show you the judgment of what happened to those that lived this law, unlawful and rebellious and unruly lifestyle. Now I'm going to show you, according to the word of God, what went on during this time when the Most High brought the flood upon the earth. Here's the book of Genesis, the sixth chapter, verse five. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing and the fowls of the air for it repented me that I have made them now the Lord was very angry the Most High was very angry with man on earth during this time because of their rebellion their disobedience and many acts of violence that they were committing upon planet earth in the sight of the Heavenly Father the Heavenly Father became enraged over the conduct of man and it repented his heart that he had created human beings on the earth. Well, how do you think the Heavenly Father feels today about the increasing violence that you see going on uh, uh, across the streets of America and throughout the four corners of the earth? Let's read on. Here's the book of uh, Genesis 6, chapter, verse 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and, a per and, and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with the Most High. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now, this man Noah found grace in the Most High's eyesight because he didn't follow after the ways of the world. He didn't do what the mass majority of the people of the earth were doing. He distanced himself and he separated himself spiritually from the wickedness that he saw going on upon planet earth. Therefore, he sought favor in the eyesight of the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father uh, chose to walk with him spiritually guide him protect him and even give him wisdom and he was blessed of the most high he and his children were blessed by the most high because noah was a righteous man that followed not the ways of the world and this is what the heavenly father is telling us to do according to first john 2 and 15 love not the world neither the, neither the things of the world for the love of the world is enmity against the most high it's enmity with god for us to love the world well this is uh, Noah, who walked according to the ways of the Most High and didn't follow after the, the people of the earth. Therefore, he was blessed by God. So this is what I'm telling all of you brothers and sisters out there in today's earth age today. Do not follow after the people of this world. Do not follow the wickedness and the evil of what you see going on, on upon planet earth today. Because all of this is going to be destroyed and eliminated on the second coming of Jesus Christ the Most High is going to bring destruction upon this planet and he's going to eradicate all the wickedness and all the evil that's going on upon this planet 
Now, here's the book of uh, Genesis, the 11th ch uh, to 6th chapter, verse 11. The earth was also corrupt before God. And the earth was filled with violence. The earth was filled with violence. Look at America today. This country is the most violent nation upon planet earth. With more people incarcerated in the penitentiary than any other country upon planet earth. Why is that? Why does America have so many of its citizens incarcerated in the penitentiary? That's another show. But that's to show you how the morals and the morality of the people have slipped into degeneracy. Because America has more people in prison, male and female, than any other country upon planet Earth. The increasing violence, the street gangs, the drug gangs, drug use, rape, robbery, and murder. These are all the things that was going on during the time of Noah. And the Heavenly Father said this again, Genesis the 6th chapter, verse 11. The earth also was, was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. The earth was filled with violence. What do we see today in our communities, especially in the urban communities, the ghetto communities? You see the street gangs taking over the communities. And actually, people are afraid to actually walk out their doors at night because these these gangbangers and these drug dealers are out there on the streets basically terrorizing their community. Those are your modern day terrorists in, in the black community. These young brothers out there and Hispanic men out there that are terrorizing their community in these local street gangs. They're the ones that's going to be rounded up. They're the ones that's, that's going to be looking at the detention centers in the future. Because the Heavenly Father is not guiding them and protecting them. So when they go out and do unlawful acts of violence throughout the streets of America, the Bible says you reap what you sow. So these young brothers out there in these street gangs, whether it's in California, Chicago, Philadelphia, New York, whatever, wherever they are uh, uh, in America, they are creating the negative stereotypes of all black men uh, because of the heinous acts of violence and the deviancy of the things in which they're doing that's making the entire world look at all black men the same. These are going to be the ones that are going to be rounded up. These are going to be the ones that America is going to scream out for that they take action against because these young men are the are, are the misfits in the in the degenerates of society. Okay? Genesis 6 and 11. The earth also was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth and behold it was corrupt for all the flesh had corrupted had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence uh, through, through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So the Most High brought the flood during the time of Noah to destroy the wicked, and foremost, dest destroy the wicked for de from destroying his earth. You understand that? The Bible says that, one generation shall pass away and another passeth away, but the earth shall abide forever. Well, God is not going to let anybody destroy his earth, destroy this planet that he created. So he'd rather wipe out humanity himself rather than let them destroy his planet, his earth. So that's why he destroyed it, because men was creating so much senseless violence upon this earth that the Heavenly Father said, in his heart, it repented him that he created man. Now look at today in our present earth age today. What do we see? Nothing but increasing violence throughout the streets of America today. As I said, these local street gangs in every community that you live in throughout America, as well as throughout the four corners of the earth, you see violence on a phenomenal rate. The Heavenly Father is not pleased in what he sees all over this planet. With violence so, so at a, at a phenomenal height that the Heavenly Father is, is calling those of you brothers and sisters that our minds are awoken to spiritually come out of the ways of this world and separate yourself from all of the evil and all of the deviants and all of the wicked, wicked ones on this planet that are, that are leading our people astray. Separate yourself from them. Now this is what the Bible says right here in the book of Psalms 55 verse 9. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues.
for I have seen violence in, in strife in the city. You see that? I have seen violence and strife in the city. Every time you turn on the news in the city of Philadelphia, you see nothing but violence. In the streets of North Philadelphia, in the streets of West Philadelphia, in the streets of South Philadelphia, in the streets of Northeast Philadelphia, in the streets of Northwest Philadelphia, and all over America, you see increasing violence escalating at a phenomenal height, at a phenomenal rate. So here's what the scripture says again. Psalms 55 and 9, destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues, for I have seen violence and strife in the city. Violence and strife in the city, whether it's drugs, whether it's street gangs, whether it's rape, rob, or murder. You understand? Carjackings, home invasions. These are the things that are happening on a phenomenal rate in this world, just as the Heavenly Father was upset with the world during the time of Noah and destroyed it. This is what he's going to do today. To stop man from destroying his planet. Here's verse 10. Day and night they go about it upon the walls thereof. Mischief also in sorrow in the midst of it. You see that? Mischief and, mischief and sorrow are in the midst of it. Every night you have brothers out there. And, and not just black people. People, you know, all over. All over from all different ethnic backgrounds. That are plotting acts of violence every single day. Mischief and sorrow goes about the land here in America. And throughout the four corners of the earth. But just mainly here in America. We see increasing violence every single day. Every time you turn on the news. Every time you watch uh, the news. You watch movies, television shows, your radio. You listen to your radio. You read your newspapers, your magazines. Nothing but outright violence every day. Every single day. So the Heavenly Father is angry. But he's giving man an opportunity to change. And to repent from their lawless acts of violence. And disbelief and repent. Before he brings outright destruction upon the people of this world. Not just in America but throughout this world. Because on the second coming of Jesus Christ there is no more repentance. To a lot of people in this world, they choose not to believe in Christ. They say the Bible is not real. It's a book of fantasies. Well, those are the ones that's lost. The Heavenly Father has closed their eyes spiritually and shut their eyes so they won't accept it anyway. But to the ones that do believe the Heavenly Father has opened their eyes, they know and they believe according to the prophecies of this book that the second coming of Christ is right around the corner. The Bible says he comes as a thief in the night. We're not going to know. But we know according to the biblical prophecies that we're getting closer to the end. But exactly what time we don't know. No man knows the hour of the coming of the Son of Man. No man knows. But we know according to the prophecies that we know that it's coming near. By the things that are occurring on this earth, we know that the second coming of Christ is near. Now let's read this again. Psalms 55 verse 10. Day and night they go about it. Upon the walls thereof, mischief also and sorrow are in the midst of it. Wickedness is in the midst thereof. Deceit and guile depart not from her streets. You see that? All out wickedness every night. Every night. This is the time when you see, you hear about heinous acts of violence. At night. And in the afternoon, but mainly at night. Throughout the streets of America. Let's read that again. Psalms 55 uh, and 10 again. Day and night they go about it. Upon the walls thereof. Mischief also and sorrow are in the midst of it. Wickedness is in the midst thereof. Deceit and guile depart not from her streets. You see that? Throughout the streets of America you see increasing violence escalating all over this society. And these street gangs. And I want to send a message out to all you brothers and sisters that are members of these street gangs. Whether you're... Crips, whether you're Bloods, whether you're Vice Lords, whatever street gang you're a member of, because all of it is foolishness and stupidity to me. But whatever street gang you may be a member of in Chicago, in New York, in Los Angeles, wherever you are, you are required to, to get out of these gangs. Because these gangs are not making you a righteous man or a righteous woman in the eyes of the Most High. What they're actually doing is leading you more and more into deviancy into death okay because you cannot get into the heavenly father's kingdom 
being a part of these satanic organizations. I mean, the hand signs that you throw up, the different uh, graffiti uh, signs that you draw, that's real demonic and satanic up on the walls. Actually, what you're dealing with is Satanism and demonology. So you are required this day to get out of these street gangs and repent from your evil ways. Now, I'm going to show you why. Because a lot of these street gangs, there are a lot of prerequisites that they have to follow in order to be a member of this gang. Now, let me show you, according to the words of, of the Most High, the outright judgment and punishment on a man who takes a life unlawfully. Here is Genesis, the ninth chapter, verse 6. Whosoever, now whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. You see that? So the scripture says, He who sheddeth a man's blood, that he die by the hands of man, said a heavenly father, shed your own blood. So that's divine judgment right there. So these street gangs, uh, some of the prerequisites of how you can join the gang, you get jumped in, and then you have to go out and do some kind of heinous act of violence. You have to kill someone. You have to murder someone. That's unrighteous in the eyesight of God. But here's what the Lord said again. Genesis 9 and 6. Whosoever sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. You see that? So that is a divine order and a divine law by the Heavenly Father. That if you go out and shed another man's blood, by the hands of man shall God shed your own blood. That's another aspect of you reap what you sow. So this gangbanger may go out and shoot this other gang member. This gang, manger, gang uh, 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 member may retaliate back and murder this man. You understand? And this cycle goes on and on and on. This is, this is the law that the Heavenly Father said that if you shed another man's blood by the hands of man, should your, head, should your blood be shed. So this is why you see so much increasing violence uh, across the streets of America. And throughout the entire world, but mainly here in America. Okay, now let's get the law on that. Let's go to the book of Leviticus, the 20th chapter. Leviticus 20, and we're going to read verse 13. Leviticus 20, actually, and we'll read verse 1 first. And God spake all these, these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage to the so-called Negroes scattered throughout North, South, Central America, throughout the Isles of the Caribbean and up in Canada. You can prize and make up the original lost and found 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. You are the Most High's chosen people and you are the Hebrew Israelites, according to the scripture. So this Bible was given on to the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel to the Hebrew Israelites. So here's the Heavenly Father reminding you of the glorious things that he's done for our ancestors in the past. In verse 1, now he's telling us in verse 13, a commandment and in, 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 in a, a statue in which we are to live by. Exodus 20 and 13, thou shalt not kill. Small scripture, large implication. The scripture says thou shalt not kill. Right? Now, let's get the book of Leviticus, the 19th chapter, verse 28. This is another aspect of being in these street gangs. Because... When you commit an act of violence, many of these gangbangers like to, they like to brag about that. They like to actually, you know, confess that they have actually committed a murder. And how do they do it? How do they actually brag and confess that they've actually committed a murder? Let's go to Leviticus 19 verse 28. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. You see that? That's how they put tattoos. You ever heard of that ex expression, tattoo, tattoo tears? Many of these gangs put tattoos upon their bodies to signify that they have already taken a life. They've taken a body. But here the Heavenly Father said, you're not supposed to make any cuttings in your flesh whatsoever. Putting tattoos upon your body. But you see these gang members doing that. Let's read that again. Leviticus, the 19th chapter, verse 28. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. That's a commandment that the Heavenly Father said. We are not to make any uh, cuttings upon our flesh or put any form of tattoos, markings, or printings upon our bodies. 
but a lot of these gang members do it. Not just gang members, a lot of our brothers and sisters have, have uh, adopted this satanic practice of tattooing their bodies up. And that's an outright defiance against the Heavenly Father because the Heavenly Father told us not to do that. But these gangs do it to signify that they have taken a life. Okay? Now, let's go to Leviticus, I mean, excuse me, Exodus 20 and 15. Thou shall not bear, uh, uh, actually, let's read uh, 15. Yeah, thou shall not steal. Uh, again, small scripture, large implication. Exodus 20 and 15 again says, thou shall not steal. Now, let's go to the book of Proverbs. Because you see a lot of thievery and theft going on in America. These are all the things that the Heavenly Father said in the past that the earth was corrupt before him and that he wanted to bring destruction upon the earth because of it and you see these things progressing at a high level in america today here is the book of uh proverbs the third chapter verse 29 devise not evil against thy neighbor seeing he dwelleth secretly by thee meaning you're not supposed to go out home invasion and and stealing and robbing and breaking in other people's houses and stealing from other people according to exodus 20 uh and, and 15 and Proverbs 3 and 29, devise not evil against thy neighbor, seeing he dwelleth uh, securely by thee. Your neighbor dwelleth uh, uh, securely by thee. You are not, you are not to uh, go out and try to break into that man's house, try to carjack that man, try and steal from that man, try to rob from that man. Although he may be your next door neighbor or he may live across the street from you or he may live in your community or he is a member of our nation because the, a neighbor also represents our race, represents our people because we are the children of Israel. And the scriptures tell us that we are to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Our neighbor represents our own nation, our own people also. So the Heavenly Father is saying we have no business stealing and robbing from our own nation, from anybody whatsoever. We don't have any business robbing anybody or stealing from anybody, but more so we have no business robbing and stealing from our own nation. But you see that. That's another aspect of joining these street gangs. They want you to go out and rob. They want you to go out and steal. Okay, commit heinous acts of violence as well as robbing and stealing, which again the Heavenly Father told our people not to participate in. Here's the book of Jeremiah. This is go this is this will show you why there are so many of our people out there. Mainly our younger black men that are out there doing these things. And not giving it a second thought for the wickedness and the evil of, of, of what they're doing. Here's the book of uh, Jer Jeremiah, the fifth chapter, verse 26. From among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait as he that set his snares. They set a trap, they catch men. That's why. From among our people, they are found evil and wicked and corrupt men. And there's a lot of wicked brothers out there. See, this is what I've had to come to, the realization as I've gotten older. For years, I've looked at the so-called white man as the wicked, and I'm not saying that he's not. And I'm not saying that the Caucasian people have not done a lot of evil and wickedness upon planet Earth because they have. But the days of pointing the finger at white people and saying that they're the only corrupt and evil, wicked people on this earth is over. You have to stop that. We have to stop only pointing the finger at white people and start learning how to point the finger at a lot of our own wicked people. Because a lot of our people, male and female, are very wicked and very evil. Okay? So that's something that we have to, 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 to stop doing, only pointing the finger at the so-called Caucasian people. Because there is a lot of evil and wicked black people out there. The worst kind of devil is a black devil. And there are a lot of evil and wicked black people out here. Okay, that's why the Heavenly Father said he's going to cut off uh, two-thirds from the midst of the population of our people and only save one-third. Because two-thirds is too wicked and too evil. And there are a lot of evil, wicked black people out here. Now, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of evil and wicked white people out here, too. I'm not saying that they're, they're not. But we have to stop only pointing a finger at them and look at the evil and the wickedness of a lot of our people, too. Okay? The Bible tells you um, this in Jeremiah 5 and 26. From among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait. As he that set his snares, they set a trap to catch men. Talking about plotting to rob 
another brother. Setting a trap, trying to set a brother up. When you see him coming home from work late at night, you, you know, or you have another brother to set that brother up. You know, you and him are walking down the street. He's, he, he tells you to turn down this street and there's a group of guys waiting on him to rob him. That's how they set traps to catch men. So there's a lot of wicked and evil men amongst our own people. The Bible tells you this, that, that, that from, from amongst this evil family of Israel, God was going to bring punishment and destruction and annihilation among the wicked from amongst our people. So we have to stop pointing a finger at only uh, 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 white people and learn to point the finger at a lot of our own people. Now here's the book of uh, Jeremiah, the 8th chapter, verse 3, to prove that. And death shall be chosen rather than life by all the residue of them that remain of this evil family, which remain in all the places whither I have driven them, says the Lord of hosts. You see that? From among this evil family, it's talking about the children of Israel, our people. There are a lot of wicked and evil brothers and sisters from amongst our nation. Let's read that again. Jeremiah 8 and 3. And death shall be chosen rather than life by all the residue of them that remain of this evil family which remain in all the places whither i have driven them says the lord of hosts you see that so death shall be chosen rather than life and the bible tells you the christ said i am the way the truth and the life in saint john the 14th chapter verse 6 and no man shall come unto the father but by me so if Christ is the life and a lot of our brothers and sisters chose death, then they didn't choose Christ. They chose Satan. They chose the ways of the world. So there's a lot of evil and a lot of wickedness from amongst our people also. We have to stop, you know, always pointing the finger at everyone else and take the responsibility for ourselves. Okay? As the scriptures tell us to examine ourselves. Oh, here's the book of um, Numbers, the 15th chapter, verse 31. Because he has despised the word of the Lord and has broken his covenant, that soul shall utterly be cut off. His iniquity shall be upon him. You see that? Because some of our people despise the commandments of this Bible, despise the Most High, the Most High said they shall be cut off and they shall die. They shall die in their iniquity. This is the reason why you see so much violence in the streets of America pertaining to our people. I'm not talking about the rest of the world. I'm not even talking about other races and nationalities. I'm, now I'm just talking about our people. Let's read that again. Because the laws, the statutes, the commandments, according to Psalms 147, verse 19 and 20, and Psalms 78, 5 and 6, the Heavenly Father gave his commandments unto the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. And then when you break the laws, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. What is sin? A transgression of the law. When you sin against God's law, he brings divine judgment upon you. Let's read this again. Numbers 15 and 31. Because he has despised the word of the Lord and has broken his commandment, that soul shall utterly be cut off. His iniquity shall be upon him. You see that? Now, when it says his, his soul shall be cut off, let's show you the judgment on that. Let's go to the book of Amos, the seventh chapter, verse 17. Actually, let's read verse 15 first. Amos 7 and 15. And the Lord took me as I followed the flock, and the Lord said unto me, Go, prophesy unto my people Israel. Now therefore hear thou the word of the Lord, thou sayest, prophesy not against Israel, and drop not thy word against the house of, of, of Isaac. Our people are saying we don't want to hear the words of the Lord. We don't want to hear the prophecies of this Bible. We don't want to hear what you condemning us about. You understand? We don't want to hear that. So that's what the people are saying. But here's what the prophecy is going to tell you in verse 17. Therefore, thus says the Lord, thy wife shall be an harlot in the city, a prostitute. And we see a lot of whoredom and sexual promiscuity going on throughout America, among our women and throughout all nationalities in this country. And it says, and thy sons and thy daughter shall fall by the sword and thy land shall be divided by line and, and thou shalt die in a polluted land and Israel shall surely go into captivity forth of his land. What polluted land should our people die in? America. And the, and the scripture says, and the land shall be divided by line, county line, city line and state line. And we would die in a polluted land. In a land that has manifested so much immorality and fornication, violence, 
rape, rob, and murder throughout it. This would be the polluted land that um, the mass majority of our people would die in. Because of what we read in Numbers, the 15th chapter, verse 31. You despise the Heavenly Father's covenant. Therefore, that soul shall be cut off. And that's why a lot of our people are dying. And that's why there's so much violence here in America. Now, what should you do as, as a believing Israelite in, into those Gentile brothers? Uh, well, I, want to, I, I wouldn't say they're brothers, but to the Gentiles out there that accept Christ. To all the other races of people out there that accept Christ. This is what the Bible is telling us to do. Here's the book of Titus, the third chapter, verse 1. Put them in, in the mind. Let's read that again. Put them in mind to be subjected to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. You see that? That we are supposed to respect authority. That we're supposed to be law-abiding citizens. Let's read that again. Titus the third chapter verse one, put them in mind to be subjected to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to, to obey magistrates, meaning to obey the laws, not to be murderers, not to be criminals, not to be drug dealers, not to be thugs and gangsters out there and deviants and degenerates and hoodlums out there in the streets, but be law abiding citizens. This is what the Bible is telling us to all of you who claim that you believe on the most high and that you believe in this Bible and that you accept Christ. If you're a Christian, if you're a Hebrew Israelite, you accept him. If you accept everything in this Bible, then the scriptures say that we must be a law abiding citizens, not to go out creating heinous acts of violence and doing deviant things to get ourselves arrested. We must walk the straight and narrow. I have tried all my life. To walk the straight and narrow to where I don't have a criminal record. I've never been in, 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 in a penitentiary. I've never been out there selling drugs, robbing, shooting, stealing, and killing. I don't have a criminal record to this very day. Because I tried to obey what the scriptures have told me to do. And to stay away from deviancy. And to stay away from that kind of, uh, that kind of uh, reality. Now I'm going to show you what the Heavenly Father said that we're supposed to do. Here's the book of Proverbs, the 22nd chapter, verse 3. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. A prudent, an upright man, a moral man who's trying to live his life according to the laws, the statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father and try to live a righteous life and a law-abiding life will see evil to, heading toward him and he will separate himself from it. When you see a group of guys out there that are doing things that you know you have they have, they have no business doing and, and, and people judge you by association, what a righteous man and a prudent man will do is he'll separate himself, he'll distance himself away from them. You see these guys selling drugs when you get off work, let's say you get off work late at night and you see some guys out there standing on the corner. You may, you may know those guys, you may have went to school with those guys, but the scripture says that a prudent man See, see it the evil and hides himself. You separate yourself from them. You, you know, if you see them standing down the street, you, you know, you, you cross the street or you are you are you turn uh, 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 and, and make another turn. You turn uh, uh, and, and make a right turn and go another direction. You distance yourself away from them. You don't have any any affiliation with with a lot of these wicked brothers out here. You don't you don't deal with them. Let's read the scripture again. Proverbs, the 22nd chapter, verse three. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. A lot of our brothers out there, they want to live that gangster life. So they'll go down the street and intermingle with these same guys. And about 20 minutes later, the police will roll up on them and arrest everybody standing out there on the corner. Because you didn't use wisdom in reading these scriptures. But the prudent man used wisdom. He used wisdom when the scripture says a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hides himself. He separates himself when he sees these guys down the streets. You know, he, see, he, he sees wickedness heading his way. So he turns and diverts his course. He diverts his steps and walks another path. That's how you separate yourself from evildoers, man. And you stay out of a lot of confrontation that way. And you stay out of a lot of acts of violence. And you stay out of trouble that way. So this is what the Heavenly Father's commission and our people to do. Okay? Now, let's go to the book of Proverbs to prove it. Let's go to Proverbs, the first chapter, as we begin to wind down. Let's go to the book of Proverbs, the first chapter. 
And we're going to start at verse 10. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If sinners entice thee, cons uh, consent thou not. If someone is coming to you and saying, let's go out and rob somebody. Let's go out and shoot. Let's go out and steal. Let's break in somebody's house. Let's go out and rape this woman. Let's go out and, and abuse this person. Let's read it again. My son, this is Proverbs 1 and 10. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Nah, I'm not rolling like that, man. I'm not dealing with that. I'm not hanging around no thugs. I'm not hanging around no gangsters. I'm not hanging around robbers, thieves, murderers, rapists, drug dealers. I'm not hanging around you. I'm not hanging around you because I know that being around you will do nothing but guarantee me a first class ticket to the penitentiary. Hanging around a person like you will do nothing but guarantee me a first class ticket to the cemetery. A first class ticket to the hospital or a first class ticket to the morgue. Nah, I ain't hanging around you. I'm not dealing with you. So the Bible says this again. Proverbs 1 and 10. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privately for the innocent without a cause. You see that? Let us go out and murder somebody and rob somebody without a cause. That's what these gangs do as an initiation. They'll see an innocent man or woman walking down the street, 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, jump that man or woman, rob that man or woman, or rape that woman, and murder that woman. So the scripture says again, let's, this is very powerful, let's read it again, Proverbs 1 and 10 again. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood, let us lurk privately for the innocent without cause, let us swallow them up alive as the grave and, and, and whole as those that go down into a pit. Does the father saying, don't consent with them. 15, my son, walk not thou in the, the way with them, reframe thy foot from their path, separate from them, distance yourself away from them. Okay, let's jump down to verse 18. And they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privately for their own lives. Okay, let's jump down to verse, verse 23. I'm going to show you the punishment of what's going to happen to all these brothers out there. In these street gangs, these murderers, these robbers, these thieves, these killers. This is the fate of all those that go and walk a deviant path. Here's 23. Turn you at my reproof. Now here's the Heavenly Father asking one last time for brothers and sisters to repent and give up that lawless life of violence. Behold, I will pour out my spirit onto you and I will make known my words onto you. How is the words being made known onto you? By listening to this video. By listening to all my videos. The words of the Heavenly Father are being poured upon you now when you're hearing the prophecies being proclaimed onto you. So listen and observe. Okay? Because I have called, ye have refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. But ye have set at naught all my counsel, and with none of my reproof. You won't listen. You won't hear. You want to go out and live the lawless, rebellious life. And you won't return at the reproof of the Heavenly Father. I also will laugh at your calamity, and I will mock when your fear cometh. The Heavenly Father says he will laugh and make a mockery of you when your fear and your calamity come upon you. When you go to prison and things come upon you in prison, you know what happens to men in prison, especially young men in prison. The Heavenly Father said, I will make a mockery of you. I will make a mockery of you and I will, I will laugh at you, laugh you to scorn because you chose to rebel against my word when you were being warned, you chose not to listen. So now when the punishment in the, in the, the, the recompense comes down upon you. Now you're ready to cry, oh God, oh God, please help me, oh Lord Jesus, please help me. But the Lord said, I'm going to make a mockery of you in that day. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to laugh at you to scorn and make a mockery of you. Let's read that again. Proverbs 1 and 26. I, will, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. You see that? Now you're ready to call upon me now. When I told you to, re to, re to repent and turn from your errors and repent of your recompense 
I mean, repent of your uh, transgression against me. You chose not to. Now you get out there in the streets and you do wickedness and deviance out there in the street. Now you're sitting behind a police car. I mean, you're sitting in, in a squad car getting ready to go down to the county jail. Now you're crying now. Now you're upset now. Now you're fearful now because you know what happens when you go to the penitentiary. So now you're fearful. Now, now you're crying out to the Lord now to protect you and to save you. The Lord said, I ain't going to listen to you in that day. Verse 27, when your fear cometh as destruction and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. You see that the Lord said, I'm going to make a mockery of you in that day. 28, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they for, for that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my, re, my, my counsel. They despise all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For, for the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. You see that? But whosoever hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. The Most High guarantees our safety and protection to, to those of us that put our trust in the Heavenly Father and try to walk according to His Word. Even though we may make mistakes at certain times, we have dedicated our hearts, our soul, mind, and body onto the Heavenly Father. This is the reason why I'm teaching. If I didn't believe this, I wouldn't be teaching this. So this show that I did, Violence in America, was to give you brothers and sisters an opportunity, all, all of you out there that are listening in a listening audience, to give you an opportunity to make a conscious change in your life. Because we are heading closer and closer to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Violence is going to continue to keep escalating. It's not going to stop. Until one day you wake up, brothers and sisters, and I fear, I don't fear, but I hope this day doesn't happen, but someday it may. Well, you're going to look outside and you're going to see a brand new America. You're going to look out your windows and you're going to see something in America that you never thought was going to happen. That's the detention centers. That's the detention centers where a lot of these disobedient, rebellious, unruly and defiant people in this country are going to go on. Because. They don't want to be law-abiding citizens. They don't, want to, they don't want to follow orders. They want to live a rebellious and unruly life. They want to rob. They want to shoot. They want to steal. And they want to kill and take from others what they are not willing to go out and work to get for themselves. So in that day, men like that, the Heavenly Father is going to turn them over and say, I, can't have, I have no use for these men. If you're not serving me, and doing anything worthwhile to push my word out to the people, then what good are you? So I must get rid of these people. And only and only protect those that have given their soul to me and given their heart to me and are going out doing the service to manifest my words out to the people. So I say to all you Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters, make a conscious effort, effort this day to change your life and to get into this Bible. To watch all of my videos as I put them out. Because I'm not making these videos for my sake. I'm making them for your sake. Let me show you. And this will be the last scripture. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel. The third chapter. And I'll show you. Actually Ezekiel. Yes, Ezekiel, the third chapter, we're going to start at verse 17. Ezekiel 3 and 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou giveth him not warning. And thou giveth him not warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his, but his blood will I require at thy hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. So this is my job. 
to warn the wicked, to warn brothers and sisters to come out of the evil and the wicked life that they are living and change and give their soul, mind, and body onto the Heavenly Father and be righteous in the, in the eyesight of the Most High. And with that, I say peace unto the nation of Israel until we meet again.